Okay, here's my web page all about Glogster. Uh, Glogster, just like I have their little slogan is, why blog when you can glog? A glog is basically a web page or a blog that the students can create uh, with a lot of pictures and videos and music. Um, I like it because they can make a web page without knowing HTML code. The first thing that I try and do with the kids is I give them basically two possible assignments. They can research an art career. Um, here I have just to have I would tell the kids refer to slide three. This is everything that your blog needs to have. Want to have it? Tell me, you know, related careers, how much money it makes, and of course, just go by the Glocks rubric because that's how great and you. Uh, and then I kind of try and give a example of a variety of our careers. They fall under kind of like a wider umbrellas for each one. Advertising, pick um, an artist or an art movement from the content that they learned throughout the year. For example, my 8th grade uh, students focus on American artists. So this PowerPoint is all about the artists that they learned throughout that year. The 7th graders are all pretty much post-Renaissance to modern day artists. And my 6th graders really get like a whole uh, artist culture from many, many cultures. And what I do is I just try and show them some basic images and uh, artists of these times that they could possibly focus on. In the handout, this is going to start to fill in the data for their artists that they're researching. And basically every time I tell the kids, this needs to be on your blog. Every time they keep telling it was, and you go, well, read my PowerPoint, read the PowerPoint. They go to my web page, it tells them exactly how to actually start creating. Pretty much all PowerPoints and information that I got from the main Glockster site. Uh, this one just pretty much tells you very simply how to do every step from creating a page to inserting music to links. And uh, here was another site I got off of SlideShare, which is another great website where people got to share the PowerPoints. And this one was designed from two teachers, Kim Aldair and Tracy Blazowski. Basically, if you can't read it, I uh, here are more instructions in a PDF file from the website that tell you exact on how to do it more in depth. And my other files that I have on here are were shown in my PowerPoint, such as to get the students started doing their artist research, and of course, finally, the Glockster rubric: how I'm going to grade their project. Here I have all my messages off the left. I like it because your students can send you messages. They are private, only me and the student can see them going back and forth. And this is all of my students. They'll give you 100 accounts. If I click on show all, uh, this just gives you a, a brief listing. I can control them, I can edit them. And if I click on this little envelope here, I can send them a message directly. Uh, you can also edit their individual accounts, change the passwords or delete them. My dashboard is how I can access the blogs from all my students. This is basically all the work of all the students. If I like on one, I can just click on it. As it loads, I just want to take you down here, show you some of this stuff. This is the information that the teacher will control later on. Uh, when the student finishes it, it's going to be finished for private. That means only pretty much the classmates and the teacher can see it. Once the teacher thinks it is ready to go, you hit public for all and it can go across the whole internet. Uh, and again, kids will love that big audience. You can rate them here and you give them the five stars. And so where students can send comments back and forth to one another, um, but you also have to try and moderate this as the teacher because some students do leave inappropriate comments on one another's sites. Okay, and this is how you actually use Glockster. This is from their site. I have asked you to create a brand new blog, and by default, this is the background. That this is all about Frida Kahlo. And I can also link that to a website, Frida Kahlo. Whoop, hit apply. If I want a picture, um, I already have a couple pictures that have already been uploaded to the site on her. But you can also upload from your computer. You can also copy the URL code from a website. And if you have a webcam available, you can also grab audio and video or still pictures from that. I already have these uploaded already, so I'm just going to pick on this one. Give some decorative background to it. I can pick on this one and hit use it. And again, I can edit it, throw it away, rotate it, or which way I need to. But data and draw are only for EDU Premium. 
Uh, that was basically it. Once I get it done, if I'm happy with it, I'm gonna hit save and publish. Give it a name. I'm gonna give it a category, and what's cool is you can browse for other people's blogs under the same category later. It's gonna give it its own unique URL code, and we're gonna make sure it's gotta be finished. You can also make the tags unique, so uh, the browsing will be a lot easier for later. So if other people might want to do a research project on her, they can come up to my site. It'll be one of the ones that come up. Save and publish, and I also want to share my blog, and that's something that you can do with all these, with all your work. And this is one thing I wanted to make competitive with my students. Okay, right here, these are all of the video clips that, um, these are all the blogs from my students that are embedded into my page. These are the finished examples they have created. If I will click on a picture, it can get expanded, and they have text boxes. Some of them you can scroll through, some you can't. If you see a pink ring around the work, that means it's going to an external. Each one of these blogs is based on an art career or an art movement. Sometimes the videos from SchoolTube will work, but the ones from YouTube definitely always work. And uh, basically based on the requirements of the rubric and the PowerPoint and tutorials and everything that they learned, they were able to create these blogs and feature everything that they needed to show me on their work. So whether it was dancing, which is an art, uh, an album cover designer, an art movement focus on was the Harlem Renaissance, and that student really enjoyed that, especially considering they were learning about it in their English class. We have this great one done by Da Vinci, features a timeline, another Italian artist from the Renaissance, another one. Picasso is always a classic. I thought this student did a great job. Not only does it have a lot of things about the art career, but it's also very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, the colors, the words, uh, the text box, the information, you know, it really has it all down for